I hope you guys enjoyed the games. Okay, it was. I hope it was good. All right. Now it's time for some hearty belly laughs. For that, we have a sit-down comedy performance by Suman Somaraj. Suman, the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Atidia. I'm a uh, audible, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You. Yes. Okay. So hi everyone. My name is Suman Somaraj, and uh, so where I'm going to do a sit-down comedy today, and don't think I'll do it. Uh, on something based on school because we've seen a lot about school today and now let's just move on to something that we consider important in our lives hmm? how about looks looks are important to a lot of people the world has become superficial height is so important i consider myself short i blame my mother i know my father wouldn't have had a chance Couldn't you find a tall guy to marry? She said, there were a few tall ones too, but they fell out of our dowry budget. We had two options, height or discount. We took discount. So now everyone in the family is short. And I'm okay with tall people. Some top tall people act way taller than they are. I understand you're tall, but you don't need to cross a bridge. You're not that tall. You're not a dinosaur. My friend is tall, so one day he came to my house. He looked at my father's car and started complaining. How will I fit in this? I said you can fold your legs. Then you know your knees are foldable, right? You don't have to fit them straight. I I may be doing this to hurt tall people's feelings because you know uh, we make fun of fat, short, thin people. They feel bad when we call them out. They feel bad, but when you call someone tall, they take it as a compliment. Hey, giant! Yeah, thanks for noticing. You know, my father is also a giant. You know, we are a family full of giants. And then fish for sympathy too. Like all people have their own kind of problems, the unique one. So, what kind of problems? I ask. Rain falls on our heads. Everyone wants to be unique. Everyone wants that there is no one else like them in this world. Think about twins now. They they've got an exact copy at home. I mean, how sad is that? You insult one of them about their looks. Two of them are getting mad. You compliment their looks. That is also shit. They have nothing. Unique about them. I know these uh, twin brothers in Kerala, in my hometown, when I was small, Ravi and Ram. So one day, so the parents took Ram to the police station, saying, "We've lost one of these. So bring the other one." Ram goes all like, "That's all we have worth. Body doubles of each other over." And now, because of ultrasound, you can know beforehand if you're going to have a twin. So the parents can get the idea of we only had budget for one baby out of their system. Hmm? Earlier, there were no ultrasounds. All twin births were surprises. The couple who had the first twin would have freaked the hell out. One baby came out. They are like cool, but done. Then an exact replica came out. Didn't we just get this? Uh, get this one a second ago. What button did you press? We got two of the same design. What to do, sister? I just elevated her right leg. Right leg brings a zero off, copy R. Why don't you even right there? Touch the right leg in the first place. And 
then the matter would have subsided. We would have figured out that the right leg does not print a Xerox baby. Then the first ever triplets would have been born. This time even the doctor would have been confused. One baby, two baby, and then, and then a third one. He'd be peeping in to look for more. And then over here. How is he to know when to stop? He's just doing his job. And after that, people stop trusting anyone about childbirth. Now for every childbirth, people are carrying playing cards and betting. How many babies do you think this one will have? Joker, whatever. Seriously though, gambling is an issue in India. The Indian government has banned gambling on land. So people are jumping and placing bets while in mid air. What can we do? When there's a will to gamble, there is always a way. So I guess that's it for today. Thank you for bearing with me. Wishing you all a, a good luck on your future. And uh, please make sure that right leg does not under the rocks, baby. Thank you. Suman, that was hilarious. Thank you so much, Suman. Okay, we have reactions too. Thank you so much, Suman. Finally, the most awaited moment, which is the king and queen of the farewell. So basically, 15 minutes were given in the meeting for you guys to vote who were the most well-dressed people. So yeah, the criteria is based on who is the most well-dressed. So can we have the PPT? King. Okay, Farewell King is Ahmed Asad Pakhtar. So, Ahmed, congratulations. You have been, you are the Farewell King. You have been well dressed. Congratulations to you, Ahmed. All of you give, a, you give him a round of applause. Everybody, an audible applause or even a reaction. It's fine. Okay, on to the next one. We have the Farewell Queen. And it is. Amina Nadim. Congratulations, Amina. You are, you are the well dressed. <laughs> you, are, you are very well dressed. Yes. Congratulations. You have been voted as the farewell queen. Congratulations to you both. Congratulations to the king and queen and also the title holders. Now, for the second last thing, we have the vote of thanks. I would like to thank the management members, our director, sir, Salim, sir, Indhileka, ma'am. Shri Devi ma'am for your imperative presence. I would also like to thank Shrija ma'am. Likewise, I would like to thank Rafiq sir, Ashna ma'am, Bilkis ma'am and Anita ma'am who have supported us throughout this event. Thank you very much for being present. And all of you guys, thank you very much for attending the farewell. Lastly, I would like to thank the organizers, also my great friends, Alfred, Arnaz, Pavan, Maria, Suman and Huda who have put a really great show today and a memorable one too. Thank you so much. And I would like to thank myself for hosting the show.